Understanding a complex spreadsheet can be stressful and time consuming. Let's look at how to do it in three steps. It's Chris here from Tiger Spreadsheet Solutions. I know so many people out there are trying to do this. They've got a complex spreadsheet file with lots of sheets, lots of formulae, maybe even some code, and it's their job to try to understand it. This can be a stressful and time-consuming process. Over the years, I've developed my own three-step method for de-stressing it, speeding it up as much as possible. So how do we understand a complex Excel file? Let's have a look at step one. Now the first step is to get an overview of the file. When you open an Excel file, it can be tempting to start clicking around the formulae in order to understand what's going on. That gets stressful quite quickly. The best approach in our view is to get an overview of the file first. That's gonna allow you to understand the role of the parts. We work from the whole to the parts. How do we do that? Well, the main building block of any Excel file is worksheets. So the first step is to establish the number of worksheets in the file. Now, if you don't have any hidden worksheets, you'll be able to see all of the worksheets on the sheet tabs at the bottom. But you have to bear in mind, you might have some hidden sheets in the file. So how do you unhide a worksheet? You can right click on the sheet tab. You'll see the unhide option there. If you're on the Windows PC, you can use the Alt H O U H, Alt H O U H shortcut to unhide sheets quickly can be time consuming if you've got lots of hidden sheets you can also do this at the click of a button using vba now uh, in the description for this video there's a download file you can find the code to down to to unhide all sheets in a file running that code now Using the VBA code has an additional benefit because there's one more setting that only real spreadsheet fiends use, which is Excel Very Hidden. Now, a sheet whose visibility is set to Excel Very Hidden will not appear in the unhide options uh, on the sheet tab. So you have to go into the VBA editor. You'll see it in the Project Explorer of the VBA editor. The good news is, that if you run the VBA codes that you can download, it's gonna unhide all of the sheets in the file, including those whose settings are set to Excel very hidden. So probably the best way is to get comfortable with that code. That's gonna allow you to unhide all the sheets in the file, get that all important overview. Now we're ready to move on to the next step. The second step is to click around and categorize. Now in this step, we're gonna start clicking through some of the sheets, clicking through some of the cells and trying to understand what's going on. It's critically important at this stage to not get lost in the detail. That's stressful, that leads to us giving up, so we're gonna to try to avoid that. Rather, we're gonna take a step back and apply very three simple concepts to help us work through the complexity. No matter how complex the spreadsheet looks, no matter how many uh, formulae there are, most of the cells, 99%, will fall into one of these three categories. They are either input, process, or output cells. Input, process, or output. We're gonna go through the file, try to find the input, process, and output cells. So let's go through them one by one. So what's an input cell? Well, an input cell contains a value. It doesn't contain a formula. An input cell does not depend on any other cells in the spreadsheet. It's where you input a value or maybe some values were copy pasted into that cell. So this is where the user is gonna input information. We could call it the starting point for the spreadsheet. Our aim is to understand the calculating, calculation chain. If we can find a starting point, that's really gonna help. So we're gonna to try to find those input cells. Then we're gonna look for process cells. Now, a process cell supports the process or the calculation in the spreadsheet. So a process cell is going to contain a formula. Now we can see if a cell contains a formula by simply double clicking uh, on the cell. If you're on the Windows PC, you can use the F2 key to go into formula editing mode. That's gonna tell us the nearby cells on which that formula depends, the cell's precedence. So that's the first thing we can do 
click on the cell, is there a formula in there? If there is, it's a process cell. At the same time, we can start building up a picture of the dependencies. So how are these formulae working together? We're only trying to build up a picture of this stage, trying to understand the general direction of the calculation, try not to get stuck into the detail too much. That's going to be stressful. That might lead us to give up. So we've got our input cells, values are in, are in there, process cells, formally are in there. Then finally, we have output cells. Now, an output cell is similar to a process cell in that it contains a formula. So it's doing some calculations. But a process cell is at the end of the calculation chain. So to us as programmers who are trying to understand this spreadsheet, it, they're really like gold dust because they're telling us this is the end point. The person who created this spreadsheet, this was their objective to display this information. How can we identify an output cell? An output cell has no dependence. So no cells are dependent on the output cell. Now you can establish that by clicking on the cell and going into the formula bar and seeing if the cell has any dependent cells. If no cells are dependent on the cell, it's an output cell. This gives us a clue as to what the creator of the spreadsheet was actually trying to do, what his or her objectives were. So this is step two, a little bit more complicated than step one, but we're just gonna apply simple concepts, inputs, process, outputs, and look through the cells. Let's try to click around and categorize them. The third step is to tabulate or visualize. Now, by this stage in the process, you're quite deep into it. You've probably got quite a, a lot of information into your, in your head. It's a good idea to get that information down on paper to kind of reduce cognitive load and de-stress it for you. So what are our, our options? Well, we recommend creating a table or creating some kind of visualization. So what kind of table might help? Well, previously, we've mentioned the concepts of input, process, and output. Let's take those three concepts, put them in the table headers, creating three columns, and then let's write down the cells that we've managed to categorize under each of those headings. What are the input cells? Let's write them in there. What are the output cells? What are the process cells? At the same time, we may be able to categorize whole sheets depending on how well the spreadsheet file is organized. Most of the output cells should be on a single sheet, which might be a dash dashboard. So rather than just putting individual cells under these headings, we might be able to put whole sheets or areas of sheets under these headings as well. So this we call an input process output table. It's a, it's a good way to tabulate uh, your learning. Then what kind of visualizations uh, can we do? Well, when I'm doing this kind of job, I like to create what I call a structural diagram. And in a structural diagram, each sheet in the file will be represented by a shape, usually a rectangle. Then in that rectangle, I'll try to summarize using the concepts of input process output, try to summarize what's going on uh, in that sheet. Now, again, assuming the spreadsheet file is well organized, most of the input should be on one plate in one place. Most of the calculations should be in another place. So you can begin to communicate a sense of flow, a sense of dependency between sheets. And I communicate that using arrows. So we've got our sheets there represented by shapes. We've got arrows between the different sheets. Then we've got a description of what's going on in each sheet. You can create a structural diagram in this way. I find that customers really like looking at structural diagrams. People like talking about spreadsheets if they don't have to look at Excel. People would much rather look at a table to help them understand what's going on or some kind of visualization. So it should create value uh, for your customer or for your boss, whatever situation you're in. So that's the third step. Try to tabulate and visualize. Hopefully it's gonna consolidate your understanding of the spreadsheet and should round out the whole process. What else do we need to bear in mind when working through this process? Well, we have to recognize that there might be some VBA code in the file and it might be doing something very important. So we have to go into the VBA editor, find the code, work through the code, try to understand what's going on. Bear in mind, code might be positioned in modules. It might also be allocated to worksheets. So we've got to click through the worksheets in the file, ensure there's no code there. Unfortunately, there's no substitute for working through the code, 
understanding what's going on with the coat. In the videos on the channel, you can see me doing this uh, in many of the videos using the F8 key, stepping into the code, aligning the VBA editor and Excel in order to understand what's going on. So if you do have VBA code in the file, you've got to understand what it's doing. You can represent those routines on your structural diagrams, um, you know, indicate which sheets they interact with in order to rec uh, record that learning. Finally, we also have to check if a file has external data links. So is the file dependent on cells from another file? You can do this uh, by looking in the data tab, going to edit links and all of the links should appear there. We have to check if any other files are involved with this file. If they are, unfortunately, we have to work through this process for those other files too. I hope this video was helpful for you. Now, this is not going to be an easy process understanding a complex Excel file. It is going to involve a lot of clicking around and it is, is quite stressful. It's mentally taxing. But by applying these three steps, so by getting the overview, by clicking around and categorizing and by tabulating and visualizing, applying these steps, you're going to be able to get the stress to a manageable level by having that kind of overall framework in mind is the framework I apply in my work and it helps me get through these tasks, helps me develop a sense of what's going on in an Excel file. Let me know in the comments, uh, have you got any other ideas? Uh, have you applied this approach and how uh, did you get on with it? I'm Chris from Tiger Spreadsheet Solutions. Um, if you got something out of this video, I'd love it if you gave it a thumbs up. And if you're looking to get into Excel VBA, if you don't know about Excel VBA yet, you're in for a treat. By learning just a few coding techniques, you can transform how you're using Excel. You can massively improve uh, your productivity. It's going to be a fun learning journey. We have our Excel VBA for Beginners playlist, totally free. We've got about 50 videos up there with download files. You can work through those videos. Get started with Excel VBA. I'll see you in the next video.